Welcome to the party, YouTube friends and Twitch friends. It's good to have you here. Looking forward to having tonight's discussion. Been a couple of days since I've been uh, in the pocket with all of you. <clears throat> Part of that was I was uh, taking care of some kids on my own. Uh, mommy was out of town celebrating her birthday, and I was left to take care of myself, which is already hard enough. <laughs> Not to mention a racket kid. So it's been a minute since I've been out. I also needed some time to regroup to think about, um, you know, when I do actually get full swing back into making content where I want to take things. Squally, what's up, man? Good to see you. Um, you know, where do I want to take things once I get completely fully back into the swing of creating content? I've just been kind of doing it ad hoc now. I really don't have a schedule, really don't have a, um, like a definitive here's how and when we're going to produce this content. Uh, my team and I understand the strategy. We know what we're going to be creating. Let's see, we have Edric Wilson. What's up, man? Good to see you. Um, I'm going to actually pull up my YouTube feed here as well so I can see both chat rooms and don't have to rely on my phone to show it to me. For some strange reason, YouTube, there you is. YouTube wasn't showing me the the stream here, so I want to get this squared away. Oh, Luz is here. What's up, Luz? It's been a long time since I've seen you. Edric Wilson says, hello, I'm an INFP. Very nice to meet you. What else are you? Let's see. Let's pop out the chat for YouTube. This way I don't have to actually be on the page is where it's happening. Hippie Mo, what's up, man? Good to see you. Let's, uh, I want to pop out the chat. Or is it just going to pull up? There it is. Pop it out. Well, that's silly. It made the chat you guys already made disappear. Twitch is weird like that for some reason, but it's all good. I'm not going to worry about too much. I will be sharing my screen here uh, as we get into tonight's discussion. Uh, so be prepared for that. I want to show you a couple of things that I think are important to understand about ourselves as it relates to the self-awareness necessary to get whatever we determine as success. So Luz, how have you been? It's been a very long time since I've seen you and I hope everything is going amazingly for you. <clears throat> let's see. Let's go back to the Twitch page for a sec. All right, I think we're up and running. I'm gonna turn the music down in my headset just a little bit. I'm not sure if it's too loud on y'all's end. Usually it comes through pretty quietly. It's a little bit too loud in my headset and I don't wanna turn my headset all the way down either because I can hear myself. <laughs> I wanna make sure you guys can hear me. Feel free as always to get questions in as I'm talking. There is no need to wait for me to be finished giving some type of discussion or lesson or anything like that. All questions are welcome. Uh, many questions I'm not qualified to answer, I will, of course, tell you. Should you ask me one that I'm not qualified <laughs> to answer for you. Um, but your questions also do not need to be directly related to the topic of discussion tonight, which is this idea of should you start a business? Raz, hey, you have perfect timing today. Well, I'm very glad to hear that I have perfect timing. <laughs> Ursula says, so grateful you popped up. Was needing a break from the second of the Gilmore Girls that these guys are watching. <laughs> the Gilmore Girls still a show? I didn't know that. Like, is it, I thought Gilmore Girls was in the 90s. Clearly, I don't know much about the Gilmore Girls, so... Also, I will be doing an after-party stream here. I'm not going to stream really... Well, I always say, I'm not going to stream really long, and then we end up talking for four hours. Should we not talk for four hours, depending on... And it really depends on y'all's questions. Usually, the very long calls are due to you guys asking me really, really good questions that I want to stick around and answer uh, and add value to you. But I do not plan to talk very long. There's actually a lesson in my private coaching program that Roz has been a part of, that Ursula Luzilinia has been a part of. Um, <clears throat> and so 
one of the lessons I teach in there is, are you a laborer, a freelancer, or an entrepreneur? And it's taken from a lesson that Seth Godin teaches that I share. I'll actually share that on my Facebook page probably tomorrow, maybe tomorrow. I'll share it on Facebook so you can go and listen to those lessons. Totally free. It's a podcast. But I added to it because his lesson didn't cover some of the things that I've experienced in coaching freelancers and entrepreneurs. Um, but it's very important for you to know the things we're going to talk about tonight. And when I share, if we get to the point where I share my screen, I want to go through uh, some of the challenges we have mentally that keep us from success, whether you choose to own a business or not. And I think for a lot of you tonight, you're going to walk away understanding like, oh, I don't necessarily have to start a business in order to have the freedom that I want to have, right? And I just, I think I'm going to release, I actually met with somebody today, uh, an entrepreneur, um, actually it was a friend of my wife's, it wasn't like a consulting thing, I wasn't being a paid consultant, it was just a friend of my wife's who wanted to start a business and she wanted me to come and talk to her and so we had a meeting and I was just walking her through, she's so overwhelmed with getting her business off the ground, I just showed her, well why don't you start smaller instead of trying to do this big grandiose thing, this full-fledged business tomorrow, why don't you just start small with the things that you can control and things that um things that won't cost you a ton of money so that if it fails like if you end up being wrong you're not thousands and thousands of dollars down the drain and this is why i cannot stress enough and, and i i do practice what i preach here I, I can't stress enough that you have people in your life whether you pay them or however you get them to help you to coach you on things like this because i have a mentor that i talk to regularly and he and i our families take a trip together every year, and that's an opportunity for us because we're in the same vehicle, staying in the same cabins, to ask him, like, yo, I've got these business. He he has saved me. Like, I owe him royalties for the amount of money he saved me in my business by listening to crazy ideas I had and then saying, no, don't do that. Like, if you're bent on doing that type of product, it needs to consider these things because I've done that. I'm an inventor. I own patents. Bro, it's not a good idea, right? He's been in business uh, longer than I've been alive. Um, but he's been, no, he's been successful in business longer than I've been alive, right? He's been in business quite a bit longer than I've been alive, right? This is a guy that's been around for a minute. But I can't, and I pay coaches to coach me, right? I practice, like when I say you need to, like, and I recommend paying coaches. I just do because when you're paying someone, then they have, a moral obligation to actually help you win right now I'm fortunate I have a business mentor that's connected to my family right he's family to me but not everybody's lucky enough to have it and I still pay coaches right and the reason why is I'm sitting with this woman today and I guarantee you what I walked her through saved her at the very least at the beginning stages of her business I guarantee the things my wife and I shared with her from our experience running a business saved her ten thousand dollars easy and even worse, if she would have taken out a business loan, probably in that case, we saved her hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. And then if her business crashes and her idea doesn't work, because that happens, not every business I've launched has succeeded. In fact, more of them, I won't say any of them ever fail because I didn't lose money on any of them, but I certainly didn't make money the way I wanted to in every business. And when I noticed it was going down that road, I shut it down. But I have all that experience already that I was able to just tell this woman, like, don't do that. <laughs> don't don't try to get this because she's like, well, I got to have the website and the market. I was like, no, you don't need to do any of that. Here is a minimum experimental thing you can do. And if it makes you money and you prove that there is an audience for the product that you're creating, then you can invest that little bit of profit. You get take that, put it into the business, get the website and all that stuff. Right. Um so we're going to talk through things like that. And, and one, of the, one of the reasons why I do calls like this is to save all of you. Some of you don't need to start businesses. It's, you've been kind of, what's the right word? Because it's not manipulative. It's, you've been kind of romanced by a lot of the things that happen on YouTube and the internet about, oh, this entrepreneurial life and Lamborghinis and models and private jets and starting a business is how all these people created these tremendous amounts of wealth well not everybody is looking to be a billionaire right and i i i submit to people that 
you probably don't need to be thinking about being a billionaire unless you want to affect some level of change on a global scale that requires you to be a billionaire. Right? Otherwise, you're just chasing numbers. And in the chasing of numbers, you may do things that aren't really in line with your values or your spirit. That then, And I've done that. I've done things in my career for money where I didn't, I didn't compromise anything like illegal, but it certainly compromised my values, right? I felt myself out for money just to feed children, right? And that's never a good place to be. And no amount, even though I tell the story years and years ago when I first made, started making six figures, up to that point, I was dreaming like, oh, if I could just make six figures. And then I got, I remember getting there and thinking, this is the most miserable I've ever been in my life. And then you realize that cliche that a lot of rich people talk about, that all the poor people get mad about on the internet is the money doesn't make you happy. I had the money and I was more miserable than when I was broke. Certainly, I was a little bit more comfortable than when I was broke. I didn't have the worries of, you know, man, how are we going to pay the mortgage, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> but I was still depressed and miserable because I was doing something for money that went. I was being professionally pissed on every single day when I showed up to do that. Underworked, um, overpaid, in my opinion. <clears throat> so I, I was getting paid more money than I thought I should have been making because that's the way their system worked. And, you know, some people can say, well, why are you complaining? You were I'm not complaining about making six figures. I'm telling you that I was miserable because I was being asked to do something that felt like being a professional whore, except it was legal. Right? And so what I'm trying to do is save people. Like, you don't necessarily, starting a business may not be what you need to do because you're looking for a certain level of freedom. We're gonna talk about tonight some of the ways you can build that freedom without necessarily having to start this big empire, right? In fact, the idea that I gave the woman that we met with today, and I, I may take the, cause I recorded some of the audio, I may turn it into a video and upload it if you guys wanna see it. Um, you know, when I was talking with her today, I had a point that I wanted to make on that. Um, one of the things I was helping her through when I showed her the model that she should be doing to test whether or not her business is gonna work, if she follows my advice, she could absol absolutely make six figures a year just running the little small thing that I showed her how to do, right? You know, I did a video here recently where I said, you know, social media for me, I do a lot of things there, but compared to what I do in my real life working with real people, Social media is secondary to me, but I was still able to make $20,000 in that world, right? And extra, you know, that paid for, you know, um, having to sell a house that was underneath, <laughs> you know, a house that I had to sell for less than I paid for it because I sillily bought a house when it was overpriced right before the market crashed. You know, all things you learn going through life paid for kids to play basketball and blah, 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 right? So it's the things that I was showing her, even if she doesn't try to turn it into, and I was showing her a lot of what I'm going to talk with you all about tonight, that she's not actually an entrepreneur. Like her spirit is not entrepreneurial. It's She's an art artist. She's a creator. And so I was saying, you know, if eventually you want to turn this into a business, you're probably going to need you know, business partners, and you're going to need a more entrepreneurial person who can make some of those decisions so you can go and tinker and play. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Because I told her, you could still, if you take my idea and you're at, you actually execute it and you're diligent about it, this is a six-figure salary. You know, it's going to be a lot of work. That's the other thing is, are you, is she willing to work more than what she's working in her, in her job that she just left, right? So, you know, those are the things we need to think through. Let's take some comments and then we'll get into the meat of the discussion. Uh, Raz says, I really like his podcast talking about Seth Godin. He keeps it real, but like, yeah, Seth is, he's been a tremendous indirect mentor to me. I like, I love that dude and I've never met him. Like, I just have this sense that if I could hang out with him, cause he's like a cool nerd and that's what I was growing up. Like I was a jock, but secretly I was a nerd that just happened. Like I didn't really <laughs> do like jock things outside of sports. Right. So I think, and he was a he was a nerd jock like he was the opposite like he was a nerd whose parents forced him to play sports i was an athlete who liked nerdy stuff right so i think seth godin and i would have fun together 
But uh, Ursula or Ursula says they binge watch that crap. Blech. You talking about the Gil? I, I don't know anything about the Gilmore Girls. It's two white ladies, right? That's all I know. They might not even be white. Uh, Hamza says, "Bro, what's your views on cryptocurrencies?" Um, I'm not highly educated on cryptocurrencies, right? I own some. I understand that the blockchain is becoming a huge um, type of infrastructure that a lot of technological businesses are running on and will run on in the future. So I think there is something there, but I'm not educated enough on the economics of the cryptocurrency to really advise anybody on it. You know, I don't ever like to speak definitively about things I really don't know enough things about. It's why you don't hear me talk a lot about politics because I don't know enough. You know, I have opinions, but those opinions aren't usually rooted in all of the facts. So I just shut my mouth. Not because I'm afraid to offend someone because I look, I don't have a dog in the fight. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but same thing with cryptocurrency. I just think uh, there's a lot of people lost a lot of money in it because they were playing something we'll talk about tonight, too. They were playing the lottery instead of trying to play what it takes to win. And the lottery mentality is I want to invest a dollar and hopefully I become a multi, multi, multi millionaire because this thing is hot. But usually when something's hot like that, it's very volatile. And the only thing we know about markets is that they're volatile and that they'll change. They can't be timed and predicted, right? Day traders will argue against that. And then for every day trader that says they're making seven figures online and, you know, the 10 people they've coached, show me the hundreds that have lost money, right? You know, for every 10, show me the hundreds of thousands that aren't making any money doing it. Right? And if you're making your money a day trade, I'm not crapping on it. I'm just saying it's, it's a volatile casino like game that is you're bound to lose at some point let's see xdvx says uh is your company in the technology sector so yeah so basically what i have is a media company right that helps uh freelancers and entrepreneurs this is kind of a generic overview there's a lot more specifics to it but it's a media company that helps freelancers and entrepreneurs, what I think all of you watching me are. By the way, it's why you're attracted to what I do. It, it helps freelancers and entrepreneurs become leaders in their market, right? And so how do, we, how do I make you become a leader? Well, it depends. Like if you're an artist that I'm working with, I'm going to help you learn the tools to get your music, your art, or whatever it is, out to the audience that you're trying to reach so that you can become a leader, an influencer, a tastemaker in that scene, right? If you're a business owner who's been at it for a couple of years, you have some success and you have the skill set, I will, I'm, sh I'm going to show you the things that help you become number one in your market, or at the very least, very, very highly competitive, right? Like if you're in a market that's just insanely competitive, it could be hard to be number one if there's an established brand, but we can certainly get you there. And the ways that we do that <clears throat> is we focus on first and foremost leadership, right? That's where everything starts, or that's not true. Everything starts with mindset. So what you see me doing here in the internet space, this is not really marketing. This is just me establishing what's called my brand or my reputation. This is stuff that I help artists and business owners with if they have the bandwidth to get their brand out in front of people to give you all value, right? So we start with mindset because the weakest link in any business is the entrepreneur who's at the head of it. And if their head's not right, I've worked with a number of entrepreneurs and to a person, they've told me, I don't, I don't charge as much as I should. That's a mindset issue. That's not operational. That's not business, not best business practices. That's not a marketing or sales problem. That is a mindset problem. So we start there, then we move into leadership. So what does leadership look like? Well, it could be helping you lead your market, right? Establishing your brand as a leader in your market, but it could also mean, mean coming into your company and helping you with actual leadership problems. Like I'm a certified, my business partner and I are both certified facilitators. So we go in, we've been in companies where we have to help them like, hey, like this is where they have problems and they bring us in to figure out, okay, what's the strategy for your business? Okay, you don't have one. Well, let's figure that out first. And then how do we use that strategy and teach you how to properly care for your people out there, right? I also do a lot of public speaking and it usually centers around that stuff. But we also help with marketing and innovation. Right, the two basic functions of every business. You have to have marketing, you have to have innovation, meaning you have to tell people who want to buy your thing that you have a thing they want to buy, 
and you have to constantly either be making the thing better or making the way you do business and interact with customers better. But at the end of the day, it's, it's a media company that helps freelancers and entrepreneurs lead your market. Uh, and I typically focus on, uh, first and foremost, uh, veteran, military veteran-owned businesses. That's my heart. Uh, but I also work with a number of artists because I have a lot of experience in the music industry. I was a musician. I have copyrighted music um, or filmmakers. And then uh, people in the real estate field. And then um, people in like the blue collar business ownership. Those are the folks that I typically have worked with the most because that's where I've had the most amount of my experience in business, like running other people's businesses before I got to mine. I've done stuff in tech. I've worked with tech companies. Uh, I helped an uh, augmented reality company last year. I still kind of keep in touch with them as they're, they're in a really heavy research and development phase right now, so they're not doing any marketing. But, um, yeah, that's a... As simple as a description I can tell you for what we do without taking up more of your time. Third Maze says, Psycho-Cybernetics, a classic. Yes. Raz says, I couldn't get through it. Way too dry for me. I really tried, but only got about a third of the way through it. I can dig it. Xdvx says, I own a small software engineering company. It's fun, but a ton of work. 100%. 100% it's fun and it's a, that's the perfect way to describe business but yeah in short we're a media company that um, we use media to help people do that to basically help whomever we're helping become leaders in their market right so if we were working with a software company we would come in and totally you would help us understand your market and what your you know what is your 12 month goal and then we start looking at okay is the head is the head of the owner right good right leadership squared away like the way you lead your people because sometimes businesses struggle because the entrepreneur is good at one thing but he's not good at leading people like something we help a lot of companies with is they're great at building widgets but they do not know how to lead people and i've spent my life leading and mentoring people right you know then we start looking at okay marketing sales and then innovation Good question. All right, let's see. The future is now. I have taken the MBTI, and it's always come up as me being an INFP. And I took another this week. I got ISFJ. I suppose that means I'm making a transition into a second type now in life. Um, so I don't. I don't know that I'm really. I don't know that there's a real answer to that. Um, I can tell you from a scientific, mathematic perspective. You are one of the 50%, 50 to 80, depending on where they're taking the test, 50 to 80% of people that test differently over time. That's one of the reasons why uh, a lot of people don't like the Myers-Briggs test because it's too volatile. Um, you got people getting different results when they take the test under you know different circumstances or at different times. Um, so I, I'm not really, I don't know that I'm qualified to tell you if you're changing. I, I mean, I don't know anything about you. <clears throat> it's probably a question better asked for, you know, people in your life. Do, you, do they feel like you're making changes? Third maze, any other particular demographic targets besides VET? Let's see, Stevie X says, I usually get ENTP. Cool. Um, particular demographic target besides VETs? Yeah, so I... Um, Military veterans are my primary focus because that's my brothers and sisters. Uh, but we, I basically, I coach a relatively small nucleus of artists, entertainers, comedians, musicians, videographers, filmmakers, right? Then um, I've done quite a bit in the real estate business, uh, quite a bit in blue collar business. Those are kind of the, and, but I've helped all kinds of businesses from the government to lingerie businesses to, you know, health and wellness companies. So I don't really discriminate, but if I had to pick like a niche, if you were trying to niche me down, it would be veteran owned businesses, real estate, and then blue collar business, usually somehow tied to real estate, like people building decks, people uh, installing windows, plumbers, that type of stuff. But I'm also, you know, I'm also a coach too. So um, 
I also sell products that take people through how to develop the right mindset, how to like figure out should you even be in business, should you be starting a business, should you be a freelancer, which is kind of what tonight's, you're getting an abbreviated version of a lesson, it's like a four hour lesson that I take my students through on, it's called Are You a Laborer, a uh, Freelancer or an Entrepreneur, and we'll talk a little bit about that tonight. Sophie Ann says, hello, greetings from Morocco. Hello. Awesome. We got people from Morocco watching now. That's sweet. Third May says, are you on the West Coast? I am not. I am on the East Coast. I'm in the political epicenter of Earth. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at that. I think if I was into politics, I would love living in this area. Um, Ursula says, I'm excited I'm almost up to 200 subscribers on my new Facebook for my book, Sweet. Peanuts to some folks, but my marathon is creeping forward. Now just waiting for the final book file to upload to Amazon. Dude, 200 is it. 200 is not small at all. Like, if you think about it like this, if you were going to do a speaking event and you had 200 people showing up, and let's say it was 20 bucks a head for them all to get into your speaking event. I reckon you'd make a sweet chunk of change that day, right? So 200 people is not peanuts at all. 200 people is a lot of freaking people who have decided to be interested in what you're doing, right? We think it's small because we see these outlier people who have millions of people following them, right? But we really, we never look at that in context, right? We never look at, okay... This person did this very specific thing that reached out to a very large audience. For example, a lot of the big people on social media, if you take Facebook out of the equation, a lot of the big social media stars attract a lot of kids, right? So, you know, my sons watch way more things on YouTube than I would ever subscribe to. And so the next hot thing, oh, let's check out Flip De Flu, or I don't know their names. But it's like one, it's one of the shows my son watches that I actually watched with him. It's like, yo, this is all right. Uh, odd ones out, right? That dude's going to attract a ton of kids. First of all, he's a great storyteller. Um, but he's making stories that even though he's talking about college and being an adult, he's making stories that kids can still relate to about a guy that is kind of passive, introverted, and feels a little awkward. And every kid knows what that feels like, right? You may be making, you may have um, a niche software engineering company <laughs> so you getting a thousand followers on your facebook page could be huge because what it, or on your linkedin page if a thousand people decided to follow you what if each one of those thousand people were properly targeted and potentially customers of yours Right. That 200, that thousand people would be huge versus, I mean, look at a person like me who like if you look at just my YouTube, you're talking about upwards of 40,000 subscribers. If you count this channel and my legacy channel, how many people actually watch it? Right. Very few. Right? I have a lot of subscribers because I made a couple of things once upon a time that a lot of people liked, <clears throat> but I don't make that stuff anymore. So I don't get any viewership. In fact, I almost titled this video on YouTube. I put INFP in the title of this video just so YouTube would show it to you. That was actually going to be the title of the video. And then when I decided to stop being a smart ass, I was like, let me tell these people what this video is actually about. Because then the people who I want to watch it will actually show up and watch it. Squally says, who is Seth Godin? Look him up. You owe it to yourself to look up Seth Godin. Ursula says, I think I'm a freelancer, but unsure where authors fit in. So it just depends. Seth Godin, for example, who taught the course, has been a freelancer and an entrepreneur and then went back to being a freelancer. And he's an author. Right? You don't just have to be one. Right? I flex between freelancer and entrepreneur. Like, my entrepreneurial life is all that stuff that I just told Third Maze and Xtvx. My freelancer self is the guy who coaches and builds coaching products. Right? And next year is going to be doing seminars all over the United States. That's not an entrepreneurial thing. That is straight up me freelance. That is a day job. Right now, I'll be making entrepreneur money, right? Don't get me wrong. Like, we're, we're going to get paid. But it's 
still the work would very much be a freelancer's type. Other words, like if I was just the entrepreneur, I'd hire and train a coach to go teach the seminars. But I want to teach those seminars because I'm going to be going around the world helping people build their businesses. Like in real life, not on Twitch and YouTube, like I'm going to be going around. Right? So you can, you don't just have to be one. It's just you need to have the self awareness to know which one suits you more. Right? I'm kind of like an even balance. I can go both ways. Like I, I don't love getting my hands, like I don't mind getting dirty and getting in the trenches with my people, but I don't like, like for example, I hire an accountant because I'm not, I don't have the love for the attention to that level of detail. Um, to be like when I turn in my paperwork to him, he he will catch. He caught one of the forms I turned into him a couple years ago was eight dollars off on some projections or something we had going on. And he was like, do this $8 off, figure out what, I'm like, hey, for the love of Jesus, it's $8. He's like, yeah, but the paperwork has to be right. I'm like, you're right. I don't know why I'm fussing at you. I'm the one that's screwing up. And I went and fixed it. I, I obviously was not the detail-oriented guy that was going to catch that $8. My accountant did, right? Uh, and there's also some personas we can talk about that we, you know, talk about in our courses, uh, where it's, you know, are you a laborer, freelancer, or entrepreneur? But then when you figure that out, like, if you're an entrepreneur... Well, then the next question is, are you the artist, the manager, or the entrepreneur, right? Because an entrepreneur can flex between those three personas. Um, and those are things that you want to think about. So you don't think of it like a personality test where you're trying to fit yourself into a box. Think of it like, okay, laborer, and I'll just give you the definitions and you can kind of, um, <laughs> Raz says, I love Seth's t-shirt story. Yeah, me too. Um, I'll give you the definitions, Ursula, so you can kind of think it through. So the laborer is a person who wants to trade their time for money to work for someone else. Like, you don't want to build a company. You don't want to have the freedom and the risk. So that's the part that all these freaking internet gurus seem to leave out when they're pitching stuff. Uh, it's one of the reasons why my marketing isn't as effective as some other businesses, but that's okay. Because I want it not to be effective for the delusional people who are willfully ignorant. Right, I want it to push away for ooh, that sounds like work. Good, get up out of here. Right, but it's very much like a laborer wants they don't want to build a business, they don't want to freelance, they don't want to have to follow up with clients and blah 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 blah. blah. They just want to go somewhere where the systems are already built, there's already rules, structure, and you just tell me what to do and then cut me a check when I'm and. Like, for example, I'll tell you a really cool guy who's like that. And I just learned about him the last couple of days because I was watching uh, this documentary dude on YouTube who covers video game development. And he was talking to the guy that invented, like, the dude basically responsible for the Elder Scrolls, right? If you guys know Skyrim, this is the dude that built the original Elder Scrolls game, so like Arena and Daggerfall. And this dude's still a laborer. He's not a business owner. He's like, I'm not a, he's not a businessman. He don't want any of that. He's still working for other companies, just trying to pay his bills. And he's the dude that invented the Elder Scrolls. Like, what? But that's what he wants. He's self-aware enough to know he doesn't want to be a businessman. He didn't want to be Todd Howard. Right? In fact, he was one of the guys, I think, that brought Todd Howard into the fray. Because Todd Howard was working at tech support during that time. Right? So, that's your laborer. Your freelancer is the person who wants to work, trade their time for money, but on their terms, right? So you're going to go out and you're going to get clients, but your freelance business, if you will, is 100% dependent upon you for it to work. So if you want to build something that doesn't make you money or work when you are not working, a freelancer, for example, would be a rapper, if you're not getting out there on stage and dang rapping, you're not getting a check. And if you know anything about that lifestyle, like as a musician, because I played that role for a little while, right? So it's, it's feast or famine. Like there's times where you make a lot of money. There's times where you make none. And in a freelance world, it can be like that. You can make a lot of money at one time and then have these dry spells, right? Where it's it's not like a job where you're just getting a steady paycheck every however often you get paid, right? So your freelancer still has quite a bit more freedom, probably works more than a person that just works a job because you also have to do your marketing and you also have to go out and do your business development, 
right? You don't have a company doing any of that for you and cutting you a check. You got to do it. So you're working more, but you're working more on your own terms. Then the entrepreneur is a person that builds something bigger than themselves, right? That can run. Like if Mark Zuckerberg takes a month off from Facebook, Facebook's going to be just fine. That's an entrepreneur, someone that's building something bigger than themselves. <clears throat> so that'll help you kind of figure out where you fall. Raz says, I'm totally a freelancer. I hate too many limitations and incompetent management. Yep, I can dig that. I can totally dig that. So yeah, this idea of, and, and that takes us into really the heart of tonight's discussion, which is, you know, should you start a business, right? And if you're thinking through, um, it's hot in my office with all this equipment on, uh, if you're thinking through the definitions that I just gave everybody, then if you're a laborer, no, <laughs> you should not start a business. And I know people that are that way, like you you have no desire to be a freelancer or start a business. If you're in the labor category, chances are, no. You should just continue to trade your time for money. And maybe you have some type of side hustle that brings you some extra cash, like Gary Vee talks about, you know, flipping baseball cards or whatever. Maybe you have a hobby that can also bring you a little extra cash. And I tell, I have a lot of family members that are laborers. I tell them all the time, we'll start a small business, just start a small sole proprietorship and work with uh, an accountant to run some of the your household expenses you actually could run as business expenses and then use them for whatever. You, it could be a hobby business, you know, and the IRS will let you run it at a loss for a couple of years. But what it would give my family members is a bit of a tax shelter, right? So their total taxable income. So, the business doesn't require a lot of work. It's probably a hobby, something they like making boats or whatever it is they do. They're woodworkers or they build furniture. You just build one piece of furniture and sell it when you get around to it. But all the materials that you bought, you know, the gas that you spent, a lot of these expenses that you would have spent in your household anyway, you now can, you now can, you know, and I'm not a tax professional, so this isn't advice. This is just what I know a lot of people do. It's, well, I'm not going to attribute that to my home. Now I'm doing this to build my cabinets, right? And as long as you have an accountant that knows what he's doing, he can show you where those lines, or he or she can show you where, you know, that line of you're doing this legit and legally is, right? Like some people are like, well, let me write off the square footage of my, no, don't start down that road. Because if you're in a home where you live and then you have to prove that this one room is just an office, like any good accountants can be like, yeah, don't do that. Like just rent an office, All right? But those are expenses that you can pass through your business and thus take off your total taxable income, which puts a little bit of money back in your pocket at the end of the year, All right? So for laborers, no. For freelancers, I'd say no also, unless you do have an entrepreneurial spirit. But as a freelancer, I would definitely find a business partner who is the entrepreneur in the relationship, All right? Someone who's got that vision for something bigger than themselves and thinking through, okay, I need to hire this. Like if you look at the people we've we've been slowly bringing on to our team, it's editors, it's designers, it's you know consultants that can help me with curriculum building, right? So, you know, if you have it in you to build something bigger than yourself, then it's okay to start a business. But there's nothing wrong with side hustling, even as a laborer, and there's nothing wrong with if you know you're a freelancer, starting a freelancing job, basically, or business where your income is just dependent upon how hard you can hustle, but you're still in control of it, right? Let's see. Raz says, why don't you turn on the PS4 and heat the whole, my PS4 is on, it's in sleep mode. <laughs> and it, yeah. <laughs> My wife came in the office like, dude, your PlayStation 4 is heating the whole upstairs of the house. Like, I know, it's a freaking jet engine. I don't know how this thing doesn't melt. Let's see. Third May says, as an INFJ, working for others never seemed to work. S starting preliminary plans for startup business. Cool. Raz says, and how do I find that with the track I'm on? Uh, 
How do you find what? What are you trying to find? I, I missed that part. Reading Dave says, sounds like I should try each and see how I like it. Ursula, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Ursula Nanya says, I'm not digging being a laborer at my regular day job. I desire much more. Right, so you're at least a freelancer, right? <laughs> Dave says, yeah, during the winter I turn. Is the Xbox really hot too? I basically gave the Xbox to my kids, so I don't see it anymore. Although if my kids don't get all A's, it's coming back to my office. It's how we motivate people in our house, sons. <clears throat> All right. Let's take a look here. While you guys are getting your questions in, just checking my email real quick. I had somebody that wanted to join our uh, coaching program, which I cannot recommend enough. We're about to do the official launch. And right now, it is 70% cheaper than it's going to be when we launch it probably in the next couple of days. So, um, Raz says, you mentioned finding someone who is more of an entrepreneur to team up. So, that it'll happen It'll happen as you're going through the process to build something, right? Like, my business partner and I found each other uh, because we actually worked together back in the day, right? So, back when I had that job, I always scream about... <laughs> when I first started making six figures and wanted to jump off the f whatever floor I was working on in that building. So he and I were actually working together and my business was a side hustle at the time. Um, and so we were just attracted to each other because it was he was building a business, I had a business uh, that was kind of feast and famine. He would make a lot of money sometimes and make no money because, you know, I was working too and, you know, I had new babies. And so... Um, It'll just happen as you're going through the progression of like when you're going to conferences, like this training you're getting ready to be in, just be on the lookout. People, someone will be attracted to what you're doing that wants to contribute to it in a greater way, right? And then you'll find that, you know, my, my business partner and I, were, we also became, you know, best friends. We work out together. We go to the gun range together. Like we just became family, basically. And so because of that, and we knew how you really know you've got a business partner is when your your values match and your visions are the same. Like he and I, he is way more of a coach than I am. I do a lot more. Um, I do coach quite a bit, but that's his primary business, right? For me, coaching uh, is becoming more and more my primary business, but I still have clients and um, consulting that I do uh, with our team. But... um you know, he's just a straight up coach like that. He's a freelancer business coach. Um, but he's also an advisor to me. Like he's, he's helped me with a lot of things that are going on in the business right now. Um, with a lot of the things that are starting to happen that are really good for us. So it'll, it'll happen. Just be on the lookout, get out, meet other people, be in places where, you know, you're meeting people that share your vision and your passion and your values. And then a lot of that will just happen naturally. Okay, let's see what we got here. Raz yells, get in now. It's worth it. Don't pay more than you need to if you can help it. So far, I've only met those who want to sell something to me. I can't wait to move past that stage. Yeah, it, it won't be any of that. It'll be someone that you meet and you talk to. You're at a conference. It, the business partnership will most likely start as a friendship. I'm not saying that's how it happens for everybody. Certainly there are people who find business partners when they're trying to build a startup and raise $6 trillion or whatever. That could be a different monster. But for what you are doing specifically, because especially because it's so focused on helping people, which is how me and my business partner came together, we were spiritually connected, right? We both believe that God put us on earth to help make help other people make their lives better. Like, I can't make your life better, but I can show you some things that will help you do it yourself, right? So we were linked spiritually when it comes to that. Just, you'll know. You'll know when it's, and it won't even, like, we just kind of became business partners. It wasn't like this official, so are we business partners now? It was, we were doing business together all the time, and it was like, well, okay, bet. I guess this is... You know, best friend, brother, business partner. You know, and he's like a big brother to me because um, he's the same age as my old. Actually, he's like a year older than my my actual big brother. 
uh, who's about 10 years older than me. Yeah, shared passions build business relationships. And it all depends on the type of business. I know Raz, you know, fairly well from our interactions on the internet. And I know her heart is not to build Amazon, <laughs> to build a competitor to Amazon. It's to help souls in the world, right? So I'm not going to tell her, go out and find a guy that grew up in Wall Street and blah, blah, blah. It's just, that's not going to work for her. So if Raz is yelling at people to get into our coaching program, I reckon I should show people what the coaching program is. <laughs> that would probably make sense. Huh. Anyway, gotta pull it up a different way. Keep the questions coming, friends. Or well, we can just go straight to the after party if you want. So this, my friends, is the coaching program that Raz is screaming, get in now before the price goes up. And, uh, the price is actually on the page. You'll be able to see all that. There's no smoke and mirrors. Just looking for the chat room here. What up, Flames? How you doing, man? That would only help Amazon if it was the end of Walmart. What if they had to become like Walmart to beat Walmart? <laughs> um, so yeah, that link will take you to the coaching program Raz is talking about. Right now it's 70% off. When we launch it officially in a couple of days, like you may have seen some Facebook ads running around those are all in test phase right now the minute i get the results back from the ads and the data that i'm happy with we're going to do the launch and we're going to take the price up to what the price actually should be which is 70 percent more than it is right now so i don't know about y'all i'm all about paying uh for what i'm all about paying the actual price something is worth if it's quality but if you're going to give it to me for 70 percent off i'm not going to say no Right, like I was on. Uh, some of you know, if you can see behind me here, I collect video games. Flames, I'm doing excellent, man. Good to see you. Um, some of you guys know I collect video games as one of my hobbies. One of my few. I don't have a ton of hobbies, but I was on Facebook Marketplace, and this guy was selling a Game Boy Advance SP for twenty bucks. Well, they usually go from anywhere from thirty to in the hundreds. I was like, oh, awesome, twenty bucks. That's a, that's like I'm always looking for deals. Like I'm not trying to pay full price from somebody on the street right? and most most people suck at it there's a couple of, and i wish i could teach a sales course i wish everybody on facebook marketplace had to go through my sales course so they can understand the stupidity of you going to ebay and oh this thing i'm trying to sell is worth 900 dollars. that's i'm going to charge 905 like well no everyone's just going to go to ebay because then at least if the sale goes south they can go to ebay and be like give me my money back I'm just buying it from you at your freaking barn or out of the back at your back of your car at Wendy's. Uh, and the guy was like, yo, yeah, come come holler at it. And so we, we missed each other. And, and I was like, yeah. So I hit him back up. And then he stopped responding to me because I was going to go pick it up. 20 bucks. And then I saw it today. He relisted it for 50. Didn't respond to me. And I was like, all right. That's his, it's his business. It's his property. I think, personally, that's crappy behavior. It's... Like you verbally have said, yo, let's do business together. And then at least have the, to me, it's like at least, and I don't ever know what's going on in people's lives. I don't know what type of turmoil. Maybe he needs the extra 30 bucks to get surgery. That's going to save his life. I have no idea. Right. But at least tell the dude that was supposed to come to your house the other day and drop some cash on you. Like, hey, I think I'm going to raise the price because I just don't think the price is fair. Okay, no blood, no foul, homeboy. I appreciate that. All right, like one of the things that I hate doing when I when I, when I I decide not to buy something, I always tell the seller, like, hey, yo, appreciate you working with me on this. I'm actually going to go in a different direction. I've got some other priorities. And then every once in a while, the seller will be like, yo, dude, thanks for telling me. That's, that's real cool. Most people just disappear, and then I'm wondering, like, what the hell? I said, no, I know I, I'm in sales. I, I know that feels like crap when someone says, yo, I'm going to buy this thing from you. And then they go 
radio silent for the rest of their lives. Don't respond to your emails. It's just life. It's the way people roll. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I don't want to attract that type of people to what I do. Um, but the point there is, um, <clears throat> if you're going to give it, the point was, if you're going to give it to me 70% off, I'm, I'm going to take it. Like, <laughs> I would definitely take advantage of that. Uh, let's see. Third May says, with your experience, how long does it take you start truly understand your clients? So I would submit to you that you should understand your clients at the very beginning. That is what you should spend a huge amount of your time doing is, in fact, I would do that first before I'd even try to launch a product or services. I'd start thinking through, okay, what's a problem that a specific group of people have that I'm particularly skilled to solve, right? One of the reasons why I work with um, so many veterans, freelancers and veteran-owned businesses, um, or you know, businesses that help veterans is, I know the language, I know the struggle, right? Like I got a brother right now that I consult and I consider him a brother who's, he's trying to do something in the medical field and it's hard as hell and he's black and all these other things when he's trying to raise capital can come into play, right? And you hate to say that, but it's just the reality in some cases where some people still do see color. Smart people see green, but some people still do see color. And, uh, you know, I've helped him with like marketing strategy and stuff like that. But I know, I know the struggle. Like I know what it's like to go from being a soldier to trying to transition into running a business. And you think, okay, all these things I've learned in my case as a combat officer are going to translate so well to being efficient, you know, taking on more of my share, like doing more for my customers than they expect, because that's one of the creeds that I've kind of allied myself with to live up to. Right, all these things like I'm gonna be, I'm gonna go over and above for my customers and give them extra and surprise them and do all these things. And then I know what it's like to feel like you're gonna hit the ground running as a soldier turned business owner. And then you realize that no one or very few people in the real world <laughs> run at your pace. People don't respond to emails or calls or I can't tell you how many, like, I've run into people who are like, yo, let's do business, and then you never hear from them again. Now, I'm also smart enough to know that that's my fault, right? It's not like if I did everything I was supposed to do in the sales process to get a client excited about the service or the product that I'm providing to them, then there would be no issue with follow-up, right? So I, I'm not blaming the clients. It's on me, but you also realize that there's there's these emotional pieces to running a business that are so important that as you know at least specifically the things that i did in the military you don't have this emotional workup you have the mission here's what has to be done to get the mission accomplished and i guarantee you we're going to accomplish this mission but when you're dealing with people who aren't trained assassins <laughs> like there's an emotional side to it there's a you know there's a concern like when you dodge bullets for a living, there's not a whole lot that scares you or excites you. But for your client, it might. And so you need to be able to get into that place with them emotionally so that they know you feel what they're feeling. Sometimes I've been great at that. Sometimes I lack the patience and the empathy. I certainly have lacked it. It's why I've been very specific about who I seek after, who I let into my coaching programs. Right? Like there's nowhere where you can just join and buy one of my products. Like we, we have a conversation first. Because it ain't right for everybody. I know my brand is rooted in power and trust. And those things are off-putting to people who need a little bit more nurturing and coddling. Now, you'll get plenty of nurturing and love from me. But a lot of times that love is going to be me crushing the excuses you bring to me on a coaching call. Right? Because that's what I believe is the best thing I can do for you to help you win. Not coddle you or make you feel good in the moment. But show you what you're actually going to have to do to make what you want work. I, and encourage you and build you up and give you the strength and the confidence and help you develop your own self-confidence, sure. But like I had a conversation on YouTube the other day with someone that was making excuses. And it ended, the conversation went really well. I was proud of the dude. It was like, dude, that's excuses. Like, I, like if you just need someone to vent to, probably not your dude. Because if you're going to vent to me, I'm going to help you solve the problem. 
Otherwise, go talk to a therapist, right? They can let you vent. I vent to my therapist. I'm not going to come on a coaching call doing that stuff. I want to know what's going to help me win. So I know what's going to help me help other men and women who've had to dodge bullets and now they have to deal with a client that needs a little bit more breastfeeding. Like, come on, let's do this thing. Like, the, the care and feeding that you have to have sometimes for your clients. You know, matter of fact, I was talking, uh, I was responding to a comment that Roberto Blake made today on Twitter. If you're familiar with Roberto Blake, if you're not, please fix that immediately. That dude is freaking amazing. And um, he was just talking about, and I could tell he was frustrated with, like, I'm searching these things that I know my audience needs to know. And this, these are the videos that are winning. Like, this is what you guys are watching. Do you not understand how this even works? Like, you're so... And he didn't use any of these words. This is me paraphrasing. This is me inferring what I felt he meant. So he's within his rights to correct everything I'm saying if I'm dead wrong. And it was just like, is this really what you guys want? It's just more videos. More videos about how I made a million dollars on YouTube when it's... It's not about that. It's about the effort and the work and the hard parts. Like All of us who coach wanted to, like when we do our marketing, we want to tell, I would love nothing more than to be able to just tell you the blunt, God's honest, absolute, your life is going to suck a little bit tr truth when you try to go after something that you love. It's going to suck a little bit. How well do you think that's going to sell my coaching program? Now, to people like me, I'd buy 10 of them. Not a whole lot of people like me in the world who've been trained and conditioned to embrace the suck because we know it's coming. Some people need to be taken on that journey of it's going to be freaking unicorns and rainbows shooting out of your ass, right? Now, I don't do that either. Like, I'm, I'm just not going to do it. But Roberto and I were kind of talking about how, like, I said what I can't decide because he was talking about just this frustration with how undereducated our audiences are. And I'm like, dude, I don't think it's under education because I meet a lot of intelligent people who just are willfully ignorant. They're not dumb. They just don't know things. And it's because Game of Thrones is more important to them because me making another effing INFP video about how to handle a teacher or a bully in school if you're an INFP, they want more of this stuff and me doing storytelling that they can zone out to and feel good about themselves for 35 seconds and not actually hear the things that are gonna make you stronger and actually make you enjoy your life more. Effing newsflash, to enjoy your life a whole lot, there is some pain that you, now you don't have to suffer Suffering is optional, but there is, if I want to be able to bench when I was, you know, in the, in the height, in the peak of my powerlifting days, trying to bench press a freaking Ford F-150, I had to go through a lot of pain to get there, a lot of reps and a lot of sets. Now, if I made a course that was called a lot of reps and a lot of sets, my two and a half year plan to bench 500 pounds, no one's buying that. But if I had three easy steps that gave me a six pack, a giant chest, three stripper girlfriends, and I bench 500 pounds in a month, it'll sell like hotcakes, right? So it's very much, um, it's very much exhausting for the, and I, when I coach, because I coach groups of people, right? Like I have my coaching clients, I have you guys here, then I have my coaching clients that I coach privately, then I have my inner circle, like my VIP team. That I like, I I teach the like behind the scenes, like listen, man, this is, and I teach the, this thing called the curse of the creator, right? And it's like I teach this to my team, and it's like you have the curse of the creator, this is your curse. It's you are, in fact, it's one of the cognitive biases I wanted to show you guys tonight. It's called. There's actually a name for it, and I started laughing out loud when I read it. Let me see if I can find it. Um, <clears throat> let's see, hindsight bias. No, it's not that. Um, the Barnum effect was funny. I, I posted that on YouTube. Dread aversion, disposition, blah, blah, blah. The curse of knowledge, right? So this is, this is one of the cognitive biases that I have to fight with, and this is the curse of the creator, right? 
when better informed people find it extremely difficult to think about problems from the perspective of lesser informed people. And that's exactly what Roberto and I were talking about today. Doesn't mean that you lack intelligence or that you're not smart. You just haven't put in the work to read three books a week to, and, and put in the work on the platforms to figure out the things that we figured out. In some cases, some of you have, some of you guys are killing it, right? But it's like when we tell you that there's pain involved, then you start to tune out. And it's like, come on, dog. We've got to, got to, got to make this happen. And what I told Roberto was, I don't know if it's, um, I don't know if I'm more frustrated with people's, it's not that they're undereducated. Like, the, I don't know if that, makes me frustrated or frustration is even the right word or if it's exhaustion or it's like this willful ignorance and cognitive bias and it happens in my family too like my family will just say stuff and i'm like you don't even you haven't even like you saw that on in uh, on freaking cnn like did you read anything about you know like my neighbor was asking me how wealth was built in this country and i'm like well <laughs> okay so there's a couple factors we gotta think about technology transportation slave labor like it's just not some simple answer, right? And it's very much like, I want to start sharing these mysteries of the universe with people, but how do I, you know, I, I even, like, I think about Jesus a lot of times when he had that quote, like, how long must I endure? And it's not from a place of I hate the people. It's like, you love the people. You, it, The frustration comes from not, you're not watching my videos because I really couldn't give a crap. It's, Oh, I could really help you if I could just keep your attention for five seconds and like, can we just turn off Game of Thrones for one day? Give me an hour of your time. And I'll, by the way, this isn't for anybody that's on these calls because <laughs> you guys show up and listen, right? It's for the people that you know you can help, but they're just not in a place. It's almost like Cypher in the Matrix. Like, why, oh, why didn't I take the blue pill? And people just want the blue pill because the red pill comes with pain. It comes with the realization that, oh, my dreams are going to be effing hard to accomplish oh i was kind of hoping i was told if i just pursue what i love it never feels like work bullshit bull and might i add shit if somebody told you that doing what you love it'll you'll never work a day in your life if you just do what you love whoever wrote that is a genius marketer but they're also full of shit and they've sold a lot of things but there's a lot of people on the other end of that not getting the results. Right? And that's just something that I can't live with. It's why my marketing attracts less people. <laughs> you know, I think about like Robert Klein, the comedian who makes these really obscure, but to me, very hilarious jokes. And he told Jerry Seinfeld, he's like, that's why I wasn't famous, dog. Because <laughs> I made jokes about being a pimp at the opera. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's go to YouTube, then we'll come back to Twitch. YouTube says... Ursula says, if you need guidance, where to focus, how to improve yourself, etc., please look at B's coaching program, Fuel Your Dream. We respectfully share challenges and answers. Word. BTR says, DW Brian Chambers, I did take the time to reply after figuring out on what to reply with. And how's it going? Yeah, what's up, BTR, man? Good to see you again. Hey, how are the uh, how's the algorithm course working out for you, brother? Is that, uh, is that taking care of you? Is that taking care of what you needed? Some of the stuff there, in fact, one of the videos I know is outdated because Google's platform has completely changed. But the principles that I'm teaching in there, the principles are still valid. Just the tech has changed. So the interface is going to look completely different than what's in that video. But I didn't take the video down because there's a lot of other things that I talk about in there that are valuable. But hopefully you're getting a ton of value out of the algorithm course, man. Let's see. Uh, so that was a very long answer to third maze's question with how long should like you should understand your clients or at least have a very strong hypothesis about your clients that you can test with marketing before you launch like that should be your whole full court press focus should be understanding the client and what their pain point is that you are specifically skilled to solve. Little Raz says, if you are a freelancer slash entrepreneur type, then I would recommend it. If you have no clue where you are headed, um, 
The Facebook group is also full of awesome people with great perspectives and support. Yeah, we also do coach laborers because a lot of times what people want is information on how to progress in their career. Like they don't want to start a business or be a freelancer, but they want to know what are some of the professional things I need to know to be successful. It's like, well, start studying this type of psychology and the cognitive bias, like understand what makes people tick. And then there's ways that you can carry yourself in an office environment that can make you more valuable to the company. Right. And that goes back to that cognitive bias of, and I love it, the curse of knowledge, man. It's so, uh, and it's weird because I had somebody ask me, I think it was last night after I posted the self-awareness video about like how self-aware can you actually be? And I'm like, that's such a great question. Cause it's, like the more I learn about my personality, the further I think I get away from it. It's like you just, you keep peeling back layers and layers and you realize, man, I am way more complex than any of these tests can really show me. But it's cool because I at least have a baseline awareness of where I'm at today and where I'll probably be tomorrow until I get better information. Right. And when you know that when you don't struggle with another one, which is the Dunning, where is it? The Dunning Kruger effect. And the Dunning Kruger effect is huge because I can't tell you how many people who seem intelligent but are absolutely exhausting because they struggle with this. And I'll read it. The tendency for unskilled individuals to overestimate their own ability and tendency for experts to underestimate their own ability. So you've heard me say probably many times. Uh, fools swear they're wise and the wise know they're foolish. So if you ever hear someone making declarative statements about everything and making presumptions and assumptions about you, they're ignorant. There's no, there's no way on God's earth any of you know the real me that my wife sleeps next to every day, right? But inevitably I get people that come and they want to tell me all about myself. I'm like, well, that's an interesting perspective for someone that's watched a couple hours of video and seen a couple of things I wrote on Facebook. I could have probably phrased that as a question. I could have filled you in on 98% of the things that just came out of your mouth that are dead effing wrong, right? But it's it, people who are unskilled or uninformed tend to overestimate. How, and I, I see this all the time with political people. They're just, well, Trump is... I remember when everybody thought Bush actually was the Antichrist. And then it, then it switched to Antichrist. People are like, oh, no, it's Obama. It's actually him. It's actually Obama is the Antichrist. Trump, I don't know, just think they're like, <laughs> but it's like, okay, the Antichrist, really? That's, that's the move. <laughs> that's, that's his move. He's going to be the president of the U.S. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, but people are so sure that this is happening. I'm like, okay, I, I can't, it's almost like you can't even answer people when they you know demand information from you from this very... I know everything I'm talking about. Okay, sure. BTR says, watch the video where it discussed on what people wanted. So simply ask them. Uh, and while the walkthrough playthrough are good tips, that will be useful for how two videos relating to WWE. I don't know what WWE is that WWE like the wrestling did you just not put a space between WWE and games, I'm guessing? Wrestling games? Is that the worldwide wrestling education system? I don't I don't watch wrestling, so I'm ignorant. I am willfully ignorant on wrestling. Let's see. Uh Third Mace says intuition assessment surveys. I'm not sure what that question is. Um Oh, I guess you're asking, like, how do I make a decision as to whether or not someone gets in the program? It depends. You know, usually I can handle it in an email unless they want to get on a call with me, like if they have more questions about something and they'd rather talk to me, then I'll get on a Zoom call and actually talk. Uh, I rarely turn people away. Like, for example, I turned uh, BTR away. I, hopefully he doesn't mind me sharing that. Not because I didn't think he would have been amazing. It was because what he wanted he could get without having to spend the money. It was just like, well, I already made a thing about that and you can just go here and look at it. <laughs> you don't technically have to buy my program to get, the, he wanted something very specific that he didn't need a whole mindset and strategy, life strategy and business strategy coaching program to teach him. Would it have helped him? 
absolutely. But based on what he told me he wanted, I just didn't think, I didn't think he would need everything that we were talking about, at least not where he is today. Um, let's see. So third May says, Brian is very intuitive. Yeah, so it just depends, you know, is it intuition? Uh, rarely. Usually it's me really doing a deep dive. And it depends on the customer. Some customers are just ready to rock. And anybody that's like, yo, I'm ready to rock and I don't have any other questions, usually that tells me they've done their homework, right? And I don't really have to do a whole lot more assessment. Because if they get in and then they're horrible people, we'll just boot them and give them their money back. Um, that's never happened. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Uh, but when when we're assessing people, it's not like I'm going to make you take a personality test and all that stuff. It's I'm just going to talk to you because the assessment is really more about you. Like, is what we're offering actually going to solve your problem? And we do it kind of like, is it progressive insurance that shows you the prices of all the other companies? Like, if we don't think it's going to work for you, like we did with uh, BTR, it was... I'm not gonna sell you something that would yeah it's awesome but it you don't need this to address your very specific needs so no it's not really you're not the right fit um but yeah it just depends and then i've had email conversations with people who had a ton of questions but they didn't need to get on a call they were just like hey can you answer these six things for me yeah no problem here's this one here's this one here's this one and here's this one let me add this because i think it adds context to what you're asking and then they make a decision, they get time to, and in fact, I had a customer who was pretty much ready to walk away, but then they saw other stuff I did and they were like, let me ask you some more questions. And then we were able to determine, yeah, it'd be a great fit for you. All right. Um, Raz says, LOL, too many millennials need that a lot. Yeah, and it's their baby boomer parents that freaking caused it. It's the freaking baby boomer parents of the problem. Not blaming the victims on this one the victims of psychological warfare of their hypersensitive narcissistic ass parents turn them into kids that needed a lot of validation <laughs> and i realize i'm generalizing america everybody calm down that's what you have to do when you're being funny george carlin taught me that uh third may says adversity with perspective in bold action is often the hidden partner of amazing growth ah, well said Hello, Manarchy. Good morning. Hey, boss, man. What's going on, brother? Good to see you. Another person that we uh, is in our coaching program and an awesome dude to boot. Third May says, yep. Lou Manarchy says, giving you twice the love, brother, watching it here and on YouTube. See? Nothing but love for you, man. Uh, let's see. BTR says, good tips. Let's see. That's what it's called. And WWE is World West Wrestling Entertainment. And thanks for being honest with that. Yeah, man, listen, listen. Pro tip for all you guys who are going to start businesses and go, you know, be the next Bill Gates. Always just be straight with your customers, even if it means losing a sale. Because guess what? I've now built, and I, and I can say this without trying to be patronizing or arrogant, I've built trust and rapport with BTR that I wouldn't have if I would have sold him the program and he got in. Here's probably what would have happened. He would have probably wanted a refund but then saw, oh, there's a ton of great value here, so I really don't want to ask for it. But I feel like Brian could have been more forthright and telling me that I didn't really need all this to get these three videos that I actually care about, right? I could have made the sale. He would have been marginally happy, but he wouldn't have the trust in me where I literally went to him and said, don't spend the money. Go do this instead, right? What does that do for him? Well, it puts him in a position where hopefully it's going to help him win. And that's not all because I'm you know, the bastion of righteousness is because I know one day I'll create something that he does need. And that trust and rapport will already be there. Or forget about selling products. BTR may go on to be the freaking president of the United States. I don't know. But if he does, then guess who I have a friend in the White House? Might be able to help me get some of the international education things I want to get off the ground. Like if I had help from the pre the endorsement of the president saying, yo, Hey, boss, um, uh, President BTR, listen, uh, I believe that Earth needs about another million years of cognitive evolution before all these social experiments of these giant nations work 
and we like we were just not going to get along until people stop behaving like fearful animals and i believe a lot of the things that i teach can help people overcome that and be more objective and treat objectivity and love for one another as the goal instead of fearful competition and i think a lot of the things i teach things that i've learned in combat and working with other people who've saved my life i think if you let me if i can get the word out globally we can change a lot of hearts and minds and not me not like a cult like i'm gonna change your heart and mind. like no i can give them information they can realize oh i don't need to be like this i can actually live happy and then President BTR gives me his endorsement during the freaking State of the Union. And now my business has everything it needs in terms of backing resources and blah, 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 to go all over the world and save lives. That's how this works, friends. It's worth losing the sale. If And if none of that happens, he at least gets something good out of it, right? And knows that he's got a friend somewhere on the internet that actually gives a shit about him. How cool is that? All of that is a win. Let's see. Ursula says, best thing I read lately, don't be the victim, set the example. Word. BTR says, sadly, I'm from Northern Ireland, so I'm ineligible. But his point, now here's the sick part. My wife and I have actually talked about moving to Ireland. See? And you, what is it? What do you guys do in Ireland? Is it Prime Minister? Is it Great Ambassador King of Swaziland? Like, how do y'all do that? All right, my wife and I have been talking about potentially having property in Ireland, and he becomes like the ambassador of Ireland to the world, Nobel Peace Laureate winner. I got a friend in Ireland, or at least someone's couch I can sleep on while I'm looking for houses. <laughs> The point, friends, is always, always do your customers right. Don't, don't hustle people just for the, for the, for a sale. It just, it always works better for you if you talk a customer who doesn't need your product out of a sale. And I'm sure there's a lot of sales gurus who tell me I'm insane. That's fine. Because at the end of this whole ride, God's not going to count my bank account when I get into eternity. But like, well, you could have had a trillion instead of a billion if, you know, you hadn't sold that thing. If you'd have just sold one more thing to BTR, like you were at 999 billion. Why didn't you just sell it to him? You didn't need it, God. Well, I'm disappointed in you. All right. In eternity, none of that's going to matter. And you're on episode 226, Illuman Arc. Wow. It's hard to believe you've been grinding that long, man. I'm getting old, brother. All right, what are the questions you guys got for me? Because if you don't, I can finish talking with you about this coaching program as I'm sure you're all dying to get into it now that I haven't shut up about it for the last 15 minutes. Uh, and then we can get to the after party. <clears throat> Reading Dave says, the way you treat your customers is the start of the business relationship. And what sort of relationship do you want to have with your customer? Absolutely. Well, it's just you realize not everyone is your customer, right? Like, I don't, not everyone needs to be my customer. Okay, did she actually read? I'm checking my email too, because I've got a brand deal that these folks want me to do, and I lost the email they sent me. Uh, yes, yeah, she read it. Okay, cool. So hopefully she will get back to me with what we need to do for this brand. So you're going to see probably some branded content, YouTube family. Twitch, you don't have to worry about. Eh, I may talk about it on Twitch too, depending on how they want me to talk about this product that we've. They sent me the product. Uh, I've had Tony, my editor, experimenting with it. He loves it. Um, so we're probably gonna shoot it. Like I never wanted to do brand deals if I didn't believe in the product. Like I, I've had back in my gaming days, my entertainer days, I had people send me games that I had to tell them no. I'm like, dude, I can't review your game. Like, why? Because it sucks. And a lot of people are going to watch it because I have a lot of trust in the community. 
because I don't BS about games, and I have a weird taste in games that a lot of people, you know, the off the beaten path people who would want to play your game, they like what I have to say because I like Two Worlds better than Elder Scrolls. Uh, if I review your game, it's going to kill you. It's not going to help you because I'm going to have to tell the truth, first of all. I'm going to have to tell people, dude, this game is a hot mess and it's broken. The concept seems okay. But then people are going to see that and then potentially go play it. Then they're going to see the game sucks and then you're screwed. And then you're trying to rebuild that relationship. So you'd be better off just ha instead of having me review it, say, hey, there's this game that's in development like not give you like i don't have a review bro your game's broken i can say hey this game's in development i don't have to play it yet like get it at least into beta before you start passing it out to people you know so i never want to do any type of video where i'm talking about a promoted product where it's not a product that i would actually use and since my editor says it was dope Raz says, what game are you playing next? I think, I, don't, I haven't decided like what I'm going to commit to, but tonight, if we have time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump into Arcania. Here you go, YouTube. Arcania. So yeah, I think that's tonight's game. Um, but we'll see. I don't know if I'll stick with it. I've been kind of taking a break from the live streaming stuff. Spend more time with my family and relax. BTR says, Northern Ireland is under England rule. Republic of Ireland is different. Though it's Prime Minister. Okay, got it. Reading Dave says, What should I ask before starting a business? Um, <clears throat> how much time do you have? The first thing you should ask is, is there a customer for the thing you want to create? And then prove it. If you think there is, prove it. <laughs> I flames says no puzzle games. <laughs> I actually don't mind puzzle games. I hate when designers think it's a good idea to put puzzles in a game that's not a... Like, I liked Portal. I really did. I enjoyed that game. Because the point of the game is the stupid puzzles. But I'm fighting a dinosaur that's made out of metal and then I gotta solve the Hellraiser puzzle while it's chasing. Like, no. Just leave puzzles out of my freaking RPGs, please. Have you tried Outward? It is trying and difficult. But you're not the chosen one. I didn't think that was out yet. Did Outward drop, dude? Am I out of the loop? Because I got lots of kids. And haven't been out of the house. Except to go to the doctor. Because I was interested in Outward. And then I watched a video from the developer. Which made me... Oh, snap. There's a new Ghost Recon coming out? What? Is that a... Man, I'm completely out of the loop. Yeah, Outward Dropped, yo. I think we're talking about the same game. Let me look it up real quick. It's the, is it the game where the guy has like the little spinny disc on his hand? I'm pretty sure that's what it is, right? Because I think it's a it's a game where like you have to drop your backpack in fights like it just totally seemed like I'd be angry as hell playing this game. And it but it is out. I do want to try it though. I'm just afraid it's gonna like it, I'm afraid they built so much realism into it that it's gonna be tedious and piss me off. And I don't like having tedium piss me off. If you guys haven't seen any of my streams. Let's see. Picked it up on Steam. Cool. BTR says, moving on. What's Brian Chambers' thoughts on remasters like Spyro or Crash Bandicoot? Well, I think Spyro and Crash Bandicoot are 
uh, Satan's work just in terms of games. Um, I grew up before the PlayStation generation and think all those games are trash. Um, but I'm okay with remasters. Like this, the thing I just held up, this is a remaster. Pretty dang good one too. It didn't really improve that much because it's just the PC version basically on the PS4. Um, but yeah, I'm totally cool with remasters. I welcome it. Especially if it's a game I really want to play. No, but you have to pace yourself. You're not so I don't mind just being a guy, but if the if by the end of the game it doesn't let me level to the point where I'm super strong, that would bother me too cuz my I get if I'm playing playing an RPG, my enjoyment is derived from um it's derived from the power fantasy. So I want to constantly be getting stronger. Like I'm the dude who figured out in oblivion, like if I just don't actually level up, nothing levels up. <laughs> and I just get, like I get my stats stronger, but I don't have the monsters level to my level, which I think is the stupidest thing on the planet. Ugh. Reading Dave says, I probably should get going. The grind starts earlier tomorrow. I'll catch you later. Good to hear you tonight. Good to hear you, man. Glad you're here. So yeah, as long as it, it doesn't even have to feel different. Like, so for example, if they did a remaster of, a perfect example is Final Fantasy XII. Like, they really didn't do that much to it. And... Not that much needed to be done to it. I just wanted to play the game on a modern system so I didn't have to dust off all my old stuff. And I love that game so dearly that all they really did was just, you know, punch up the textures and the colors a little bit and make it 16 by 9, right? Make it, you know, 1080p. I, I love the game as it was. I didn't need it to change. I just wanted to, ha I wanted to play it again and being able to play it on my PlayStation 4 was exciting. But yeah, I'm totally cool with uh, remasters. Hell, I, there's a bunch of games I wish they would remaster. Like, I wish they'd remaster the Shadow Heart series. Um, I wish they'd remaster um, some other games. I wish they'd bring, like, to modern consoles. Like, a lot of the old NES stuff, I wish I could play. I guess you could play that on the Switch. With um, Have they installed the virtual console yet? I'm not sure. Cool. What other questions y'all got? BTR says, moving on, thanks for the show. I'll try to join these streams whenever it's possible and on. Uh, also, some of the older PS3s do have backwards. Yeah, I actually do have a PS3 that plays. I just got it, actually, for a pretty good deal. I have the PS3 that plays PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 1 games. I just like being able to play like Final Fantasy on my Final Fantasy 2 or 12 on my PlayStation 4 with up res graphics. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the PS5 does. Luman Arky says, sorry, Outward is epic, not Steam. So damn many long... I know, man. I I'll get the console version anyway. Like, if I ever have to choose between console and PC, I almost always go console. About the only time I'm more inclined to play on PC is if I feel the game needs to be modded, like Bethesda games. Or, as much as I hate to say it, Witcher 3. Come on. Like the one fatal flaw of that game is what kept it from becoming my favorite RPG of all time. One little flaw, but it was such an important one. All right, any other questions or should we get to um, 
or should we just get to um, the after party? I Flame says, do you like Diablo? Diablo 3's been pretty cool. It, it didn't change my life, but it's fun in spurts, I guess. Witcher 3 has a crossover into the Monster Hunter world. I'm clearly not up on my video game news. Ursula says, I like original Metroid because new graphics make me puke. Original Metroid is my favorite game of all time. No, not Super Metroid. Original Metroid. Even though I guess technically regular Super Metroid is supposed to be better. I beg to differ. BTR says, gotta go. See ya and thanks. Enjoy the after party. Good to see you, man. Glad you came out. <laughs> Mike says, getting old, brother. We be yeah, tell me about it, dude. Although I'm constantly reminded by my business partner and my mentors that I'm still a young buck, so I think what it is is I'm just older than everybody on the internet. Well, not everyone, because I coach a lot of people older than me, but um, I uh, I do spend a lot of time around people younger than me, so I feel older. Lost Odyssey is a darn good game, or damn good game. Uh, yeah. Um, no comment. Had a lot of almost broken televisions from wanting to throw controllers at that game. <laughs> but again, I grew up in a time where games didn't take 30 seconds to load the effing fight while everyone's graphics were loading and stretching and I just let me have the fight. Cutscenes. Yeah, a lot of nitpicky things bother me about modern video games. That I think a lot of people that grew up in the generation after me were just used. Like you were used to load times. You were used to like Final Fantasy VII. The characters have to load in, and the camera has to spin <sighs> around to make this epic. Like, dude, I don't just freaking let me fight the behemoth. I don't need all this extra cinematic nonsense every effing time we get in a fight. And then a lot of even newer games made it worse. Like Lost Odyssey made me want to pull my hair out. Like I liked the story. I thought it was interesting. Um, but I could not take... I finished it though. I, I never got all... I never did a 1K a trophy or achievement run on it. But I did finish Lost Odyssey. I appreciated the story. But dang, the freaking combat system made me want to jump off a bridge. It was long, too, yeah. I've actually been looking for another copy of that game to add to my collection. So I'm like, I should probably try to play that again now that I'm older and life is slowing down a little bit and I'm not impatient and angry. <laughs> Just play it as a regular guy. All right, well, if there's no more questions, I think I'm going to get set up for the next stream. Sorry, YouTube, you won't be alone for that ride, but you can certainly follow me over on twitch.tv slash Bryant Chambers, and we can hang out there. Man, it's been a slow crowd tonight. I guess Thursday nights are not the ideal streaming time <laughs> for YouTube. We usually have a much bigger fun, but that's cool. Maybe the topic, too, was not... I think there's a very small percentage of people that follow me, which that's going to change, by the way, because the content strategy we have going forward for our podcast and Facebook, which will then trickle into Instagram, will also trickle into um, LinkedIn, it'll trickle into, um, uh, uh, not necessarily Twitch, Twitch will be my podcast and shows like this. Uh, YouTube, we've got some stuff that we're probably going to do with that in the future. Uh, right now, we've just kind of been putting a thing out here, a thing out there. I've been slowly trying to dismantle the channel. Um, 
from like most of the traffic we get is just not from people who are going to want to stick around based on uh, the real purpose of the channel. Uh, you know, it, it, what got popular on my channel made it misleading. So we took a lot of the content down. Um, and that's, it's definitely slowed things down, but I'm okay. Like we went from getting about a thousand subscribers a month, um, you know, not really putting out any content to, I think now it's down to like 200, which is good because that means we're no longer getting this influx of subscribers who are never going to watch our content because we don't make the thing that they're subscribing for. And these live streams have gone a long way to get people to leave like people see the live stream like ah oh, he's talking about business or he's talking about how to be a decent human being i don't want to be any of that and it's, <laughs> people will unsubscribe so which is a good thing uh it's good for them and it's good for us so much love all right i'm about to here let's see raz says everybody's watching gray's and that is that still a show Guys, I don't watch TV, so I'm stupid on all that. Like, I talked about willful, willful ignorance in the beginning. I am willfully ignorant about television. Hippie Mo says, see ya. <laughs> Lou Manarchy says, hey, brah, how can I monetize music? <laughs> Grey's Anatomy, I didn't realize that was a show anymore. Like, I've heard of it before. I never watched it. Uh, but yeah, so I'll be back on Twitch here in a couple minutes for the after party. Got to go check on a wife and some babies. Um, we'll hang for a little while and then I'm going to go to bed. I love you guys much, man. YouTube as always. Hope everything's going amazing. Uh, if you would like more information about my coaching program, links to it are all over the freaking place. There you go. And there you go. At the very least, take a look at it. Um, Pretty much everything you should need to know to know if you'd like to work with me, my team, and the other people in the program, because we all work together, um, is on that webpage. If you have more questions, go ahead and request access. And then when you get the email from me, just ask me the questions. Because requesting access doesn't charge. There's no money. No money changes hands until you and I have actually had a conversation. I need to make that clear. Like, nothing on that website is going to bill you anything. Like I, for people that we approve to join, I personally send out the sign up form. None of that happens on the website, and that is on purpose because I want to make sure the people that are getting into it are people that should be into it. So at the very least, do the request to access, and then just ask me questions about what are your goals, what are you trying to do, and I'll tell you straight up whether or not, like BTR said, I told him that it wasn't for him because what he wanted, he could go get somewhere free and fast and didn't need to drop the money in order to get something that I've taught people for years for free. All right, so check it out. Give me a holler. Let's talk. Uh, 